coming up on this episode of Common Denominator. I don't underwrite nothing. I see the listing at five million, I make an offer at two and a half. It's 10 million, I make an offer at five. And if they answer back, assuming they're not cussing at me, right? Uh, they, then we underwrite. Hi, and welcome to Common Denominator, where we shine a light on people striving to make the world a better place. Today, a conversation about real estate investing and how you can take advantage of current trends. Jalal Abumweis, AKA the King of Miami Real Estate, is, as you probably guessed from his nickname, a real estate mogul. He's built a booming business in South Florida and has expert strategies to help you make money in real estate. He'll also share his personal journey that took him from homelessness to entrepreneurship. Jalal and I just had a very fun conversation and the thing that really stuck out to me was all the practical tips how you can take advantage of the real estate market right now. So enjoy the show. Hi, Jalal, and welcome to Common Denominator. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So I want to get right into it because obviously this is my wheelhouse. It's your wheelhouse. And like yeah. my wife said, when we're around real estate investing people, yeah. the language is always kind of the same. Yeah. What is it right now about real estate that kind of excites you the most? Right now, it's just um, that I get this high when, when I get in the process of finding the deal and negotiating it and taking it from no to a yes. Like, that's to me the most exciting. Myself, are you asking about the process or the actual market? You know, for you, for you, what you're looking for right now, right now we're oh. seeing, right? Right now we're seeing there's panic, there's yeah. fear. What's really on the ground that I'm getting? People are calling me all the time, uh, you know, uh, can you help? Uh, my bank's not going to be able to refinance me. Yeah. It's going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, I'm seeing a lot of panic, a lot of fear. Interest yeah. rates are, you know, all-time high. But then, but then let, me, let me say this. I mean, the panic and the fear is for the unprepared or for the people that didn't prepare pro properly, right? So if you kind of like started like looking at what's happening and prepared yourself for this bad day one day or interest, you know, uh, rates going, you know, extremely higher... I don't think there will be panic because to me right now, like I sold over 90% of everything I've owned just eight months ago or more or less. And I actually don't see it's panic. I see it's an opportunity coming up for me. So I need the panickers, if that right. makes sense. No, no, so it's for, excitement for me. For sure. I definitely, I definitely hear that. Um, and that's exactly the right thing. I love what you're saying is about preparation. Yeah. So what was going on in your mind? Uh, let's, Let's dial back a couple, yeah. a couple years ago. You're yeah. like, okay, I'm kind of seeing what's what's happening here. Yeah. What steps? Obviously, you know, you sold your properties, but what was going on in your mind? Did you see that the rates would rise and that it would actually yes. affect the value? So again, like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm when when I go to invest my own money, which is that's what I do. I haven't raised money from anyone yet. Everything I've done is in-house equity, and we owned up to 94 apartments. Again, owned by me only, the company only. And uh, as I saw rates going higher, and then I was at a point where I knew in two years or about a year and a half out minimum, uh, up to two years maximum, I have to refinance out to take out, because it was like a bunch of them were on a lease option. So I need to get a loan soon. And I seen that, you know, not cope well with where I see interest rates are going. And I did leave a little bit of money on the table and I decided to sell them then and to stay very liquid and wait for the opportunity to come, which is happening right now. Just saw a guy listed an office building for 5.3, been on the market for months. I literally offered two and a half million. That's less than half of what is it listed for. And the answer was good offer. We'll mm. consider. Do that a year ago. You'll get cussed out and blocked. And now they're listening to half off offers. So I'm I'm excited. I think yeah. it's good stuff. I, I happen to I happen to agree with you. Yeah. Um as far as prep preparation, obviously you have to make sure if anybody's in the real estate business or wants to get into the real yeah. estate business, if they're sitting on sitting on cash, I think that you have to organize your house, which means yeah. whatever current investments you have, yeah. you are already in it. Yeah. Meaning banks have kind of stopped. Trending. Yeah. Um, but I do believe that if you are going to be a long term real estate investor for the next 10 years, the next two years is probably going to be the best um, price. And that is the key. 
It's the price per pound. What are you going to pay for that piece of real estate? Because what goes down comes yeah. back up, right? You're absolutely right. I mean, look, with real estate, it's kind of difficult for people to get prepared. Now, for somebody who's been buying and turning properties over and over and over for years, it's almost like they don't know how to stop. And that's when they buy more than they chew because they kind of like – neglect, uh, you know, studying what's happening because what they're doing has been working for years. So they mm. keep going with it. And uh, and then they, they realize they're, you know, too deep into into that them biting more than they chew. They can chew, uh, you know, at the wrong time. But the thing is also when I say this, you'll get to say, man, but there's so many people should easily know this. You're right. We're seeing people that are extremely good at what they do and they've built uh, portfolios of thousands of doors right now actually fall apart. Mm. So yeah, simple data, any of us in the city could actually, you know, understand, yeah. but not many can apply. Do you, how many syndicators falling apart right now? I see many. Oh, many. Yeah. And you know, where they took rates at six or seven and a half, that's like if they took it a year ago, and now they can't even make sense of what they bought. They're offering everybody, like we're gonna pay you the six and seven percent, but your rate is higher than what you're actually offering who put uh, money to, to, to everyone that put money with you. Does it make sense? They're falling apart. And I think it's difficult to stick to your plan when things is working out, have been working out for so well for so long. Mm. And then times change and you're like, like, you know, like, well, what I'm doing is working and, you know, I can't, I can't cope with it. At the I, I, I love minute. that you said that. Like, I think the idea of the, the pivot, yeah. um, you have to train yourself in business. If you're going to be in business, if you're going to be any business, real estate yeah. or entrepreneur, uh, you have to get extremely comfortable uh, with with pivoting. That things yeah. will can daily change, weekly, monthly, and that you don't put so much emotion on that change. You have to constantly look at the numbers, do the analysis. Just because something looks really bad, don't hide behind. I see that a lot. Yeah, there's this fear, and people blank out. Mm -hmm. So you have to. If you're running, if you choose to run a business, yeah, then you got to stand. It's the good times mm -hmm. and the bad times. Yeah, and if you can mitigate the bad times, right? Yeah. So, so since we're here to help people out, because that's why people are going to be listening to us. So, f on your behalf, tell me. Then I'll answer after you, sure. or I'll, I'll add my two cents on. So, how do they prepare? Let's say small-time investor, local, or somebody looking to become a syndicator. How do you prepare? So. I I just had this conversation with somebody two days ago. Yeah. Um, and he actually, he he rents luxury homes. And he actually had to take a loss on this home because he did the math. I always say it comes down, it comes down to the math. But he won in other parts. The key is in business you should have different diversification, different investments, different things. But to be super honest with your numbers that maybe it's going to cost me a few hundred thousand dollars and and then in the end my net I'm going to hold this for three years but I'm not going to have the cash in my pocket plus the stress on me right yeah you have to be comfortable the same way you're comfortable taking a win mm -hmm. you have to be super comfortable taking a loss yeah in this environment yeah if you see the loss take it yeah take the loss and move on so you're still in the game. But Keep then, but then the how do you prepare to not take a loss? The only, the only way is, to, I would say, in reality, is to not over leverage. You have to be also realistic when you're, again, it's basic, basic math in every business. Money comes in, money goes out, right? We're buy, you're buying something and you say, you know what? I'm buying this for 100,000. It's going to sell for 200,000. And you know what? Today it's only worth 80,000, but I don't have... The ability. So do you rather hold on to a good deal that's bought, you know, at the right numbers, but it's over leveraged or a deal that's overpaid for, but it's under leveraged? So you, you if, if the, the ultimate question is knowing my monthly expenses, personal expenses, and then my business expenses, do I have the capacity realistically to hold on to this. It's gonna cost me $20,000 a month. Mm -hmm. It's gonna cost me 30,000. If I, if you truly believe in your gut, you've been doing yeah. this long enough, you truly believe in your gut, that 
that this deal eventually will go up um, a lot. It's got to go up a lot yeah. because right now cash is king. Cash is king. Right now you can put you can put money in treasuries in money market or earning over five percent. <laughs> Yeah, right? we've been saying this. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's the first yeah. time in years. So savers, right? You just have like that. So, And then that means that the opportunities are going to come where you can earn 10, 15, yeah. 20%. I think in my opinion, I guess where I was trying to lead to is how do someone prepare to not lose? Or how do you prepare for like 2024 market, right? I think like a thing that is that is extremely underrated that I don't think many really do properly is really talk to people been there before you and understand how bad time did times get and what did they do and don't just take advice from what they did. Also take advice for, I mean, uh, take from their advice what they also didn't do. Maybe they don't say it, but watch what they've done and where they at today are they you know doing well or not i agree i call that that's call, one thing i tell you I, I i know exactly what you're talking about i yeah. call that like wet cement meaning you take like their philosophy because history you can learn a lot from history yeah and from people's experience yeah but also they've never lived in your shoes so it's this delicate balance because maybe you didn't explain to that older wiser person everything that's actually going on in your heart and the nuance in the end, you're gonna have to stand front and center and pull the trigger yeah. and make responsibility. But hundred percent. But logistically, is also if you buy real estate, lock in. If you have a normal interest rate, lock in for ten years if you can. Lock yeah. in the interest rate because that, you know, floating rates kills people. So the preparation, without a doubt, is to lock in long term. You're absolutely right. I mean, I personally have about three people. Every time I want to make a decision, I, I ask them the questions, right? And I actually tell these three people respectfully, they're extremely wealthy. Don't tell me what to do. I'm going to give you a case scenario and you tell me what you would do. And I'll take away from it whatever actually resonates, right? Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, that's a thing that I do consistently and that serves me extremely well. I, now, I, I like that a lot. Yeah. I, I like, like that. And I like that you go to three people. Yeah. Because in the end, you know that you're going to have to be making the decision. Yeah. But you're getting, you're mitigating the risk so much by their deep life experience. Yeah, 100%. And I was also reading recently, Yeah. Um, you become a product of the top five people you spend the most amount of time with. Of course. So the fact that you're fortunate enough to be around these deeply wise, successful people, mm -hmm. mentoring you, seeing them, talking to them. Yeah. Through osmosis, you will yeah. become successful compounding. Yeah. And the good thing is the three don't know each other. Hmm. They're not even, they don't have no idea who is, you know, the other. Which wow. And they all have different life stories. And I like to share with them, hey, I'm doing this. What would you do? Don't tell me what to do. What would you do? So let's go. I want to ask yeah. you, what, now moving forward, it's a crazy time. Tell me. We're in a pivotal, t we're in a pivotal yeah. time in, the, in real estate. Yeah. If someone's starting out right now, what advice would you give them? As an investor, as what? As, I would say as an investor because that's what we both are. Yeah. And I want to hear from you as the guest what you would, the advice you would give yourself. So, it, I mean, I have money. I don't have money. Am I, did I raise money? It's my money. Like, just let's give just me that say, piece. Let's just say, let's just say, you're able to put together money. You've you've worked hard. You have savings. Great. And you want to you yeah. know that you yeah. want to build wealth and you yeah. want to be in real estate. So if I syndicate it, one, I'll keep in my mind since I'm a new. That means I'm very hungry and I need to make money. So step one, don't just buy to make your fees and just to say you've done a deal and then lose your investors. You know, on the long term. Uh, two, when you when it comes to you doing business, I mean, you can't just sit back and say, let the market get better versus say, I am going to make disrespectful offers. I am going to get out there and I'm going to underwrite and I'm going to make offers on what makes sense, not what makes sense to that realtor because I want to build a relationship. I literally, like, I know this sounds ridiculous, but I see people offer more than what their numbers tell them to offers to build relationships. Mm. Then what? Then lose the people that actually give you money? That's that's ridiculous. Actually, I actually have a formula right now that I go with in my office because uh, now recently we started making offers on office buildings. We've never done that before. I'm, I've been doing it for a couple weeks now. I don't underwrite nothing. 
I see the listing at five million, I make an offer at two and a half. It's 10 million, I make an offer at five. And if they answer back, assuming I'm, they're not cussing at me, right? Uh, they, then we underwrite. Because if they're willing to respond, they're willing to work with me on the numbers, then I'll actually underwrite and they will make a proper, better offer. So, yeah. so my advice would yeah. be make good offers that serve you and your party uh, and not just think of like, uh, you know, I just want to please somebody or build relationships or I'll wait till, you know, deals get better. By the time they do that, it's too late for you anyways. If you can't pick up a deal now, you're not going to pick it up next year. I agree. I agree yeah. with you. I agree with that. We've been doing that. I'm making extremely low ball offers with intelligence. So at yeah. least we can have something for the file that makes sense. I'll tell you, because I started in the other, uh, in my real estate business, 2009 during the crash. And it was a property. It was a very, it was a, it was a, it was a bigger property. I was going to extend myself. Everybody told me that this particular guy was nuts. Do not call him. Do not, do not speak to mm -hmm. him. Nothing. Uh, the first time I c called him, he talking about people cursing you out. Every curse word in the book, he just threw it at me. So the next day, good. That's exactly right. So what I did the next day is I called him back, and I was even nicer to him. And I did that for a year. Yeah. Every single day, don't ever call me again. Don't ever call me. I said till one day he had a situation with a partner with his partner, and he said, "Listen, if you do this and this, the property is yours." I said, "Done." I didn't negotiate anything with them. Wow. And that property today, they just up, up zoned it, and it's in uh, off Biscayne Boulevard. If anybody yeah. knows where Miami word is, yeah. it's probably going to be one of the best investments that we made. So, wow, that advice that you're giving, not to care because it's all manipulation, not to care about someone cursing you out or someone saying no. Yeah. Remember, no, and they always say this: no is the beginning of yes. It's the other person's I love issue. That. Yeah, so just be true and be nice. Yeah. Yeah. What it, it was great, you know, You're and right. that literally, I've had yeah. many stories like that, so I appreciate that. That's awesome. But I want to, um, I want to ask you, you know, I see, I feel a lot of passion that you're coming from real estate. What brought you to real estate in the first place? Uh, I worked for Grant Cardone and, wow. uh, okay. and then, uh, I actually was in his office. I was in his office and I realized a lot of, uh, a lot of his good lifestyle comes from his real estate investing more than anything else. And uh, I worked for an Israeli guy that owned a dealership in Georgia mm -hmm. and he actually owned the real estate whereas his dealership and he owned like another about 28, 30 properties. He actually owns building in Tel Aviv. And then one day he sits with me and tells me, and I used to be, I'm his employee. He's like, you know, like, I don't want you to think everything we do is just off the cars we sell. I actually own a lot of real estate. And he started to tell me more about real estate. And then at some point after I got fired by Grant, I sat down to think, I'm like, man, every rich person I know is in real estate. You know what? I'll get in real estate. And I got my real estate license. Uh, I started as a realtor. Maybe six to eight months into it, I was like, I never want to be a realtor ever again. Right. And I gave it up immediately. It's funny. I had that experience yeah. going to law school. I spent yeah. years in law school. Yeah. My first transaction, I was doing a real estate transaction. Yeah. I was in a suit and tie. And then the guy that I was representing was like shorts and a t-shirt. Yeah. And he's getting, you know, I'm getting this couple grand check. And yeah. then he's getting this huge, yeah. this huge check. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a second. What am I doing? Yeah. I'm like, so I want to be, I want to be, I want to be like him. So that started. And I also like what you said. I like all the moving parts of real yeah. estate investing, all the negotiation, all the legal, uh, all the management. You know, we also have management mm -hmm. and all those parts. And if you have it in your blood, it definitely, every real estate person that's an yeah. investor, um, you know, obviously when it's tough times, obviously they're more quiet, yeah. but there's a certain passion, a certain way. Yeah. Um, certain way about it. It's addictive, them. man. That's exactly right. But what one thing also that I appreciate is your, is your backstory. You spent some time being homeless. Right? I did, yeah. So uh, I'll start with the second time because the first time will take mm. much longer than this episode. Second time after I got fired by Grant and uh, and I would get my, and I went to get my real estate license. Mm. Obviously, you know, as a realtor, you do not uh, get a salary. So between from the day I got my license and I've got my first deal, which literally made me about fourteen hundred bucks, and it was a rental. There was eight months, so I slept those eight months between my car. And the office, I used to have my license with the brokerage, right? I think it's called uh, Lifestyle International Realty. They're pretty known here, right? 
Uh, so I slept between the office. If the security guy doesn't catch me, I would sleep in the office because there's AC. And if I got caught, he throws me out. Then I sleep in my car without an AC. So that was the eight months where I really lived that life. And then, uh, and I'm happy I lived it there because uh, a lot of people can actually witness, w- did witness uh, the story from there to who I am today. So I'm pretty grateful for it. Obviously, it has a big part of. Uh, why am I? Why I am at where I'm at today, and I'm pretty grateful for I mean, it. And probably your framework is starts from a place of gratitude. Very that, much. Yeah. Uh, people, some people think I'm not grateful. C- can we cuss on this? No, we can't. Yeah. So some people think I'm an asshole, right? Because if you grab my phone, you'd see like a G700 private jet. I always want the next thing, but it doesn't mean I'm not grateful. I'm grateful the first 10 minutes of my day. I write what I'm grateful for, for my mother, for my health, for blah, 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 right? After that, I'm done. The rest of my day is focused on the next bigger thing. Mm. Like, I get disgusted if my life is the same every six months. If it doesn't really shift and change, like, I'll get bored. So I need the bigger next thing, and I'm, and I'm a good guy. Like, I, I take care of my family. I take care of, I adopted families. I do, I do a lot of good stuff. So first of all, God wants to give it to me. He just wants me to work for it. And I'm talented enough, and I'm gifted enough, that's what I believe, to actually get those things. So yes, I'm grateful, but I don't spend my whole day being grateful. I'm grateful for the first 10, 15 minutes. After that, I'm working. Proving to God that he did a good thing by bringing me on, on here. So, no, so I love that. I met, yeah. I met some guy fellow he does um luxury i was telling you a little bit about this he does yeah. luxury uh rentals and he also and you could see it in his eyes he also spent about six weeks in his car love it and and honestly i think that part of the recipe if we look at it part of the recipe of of that foundational success because if you've been to zero and you that means that you're just working extremely hard you never want to go back there. You have gratitude for the things that you have. Very much. And and I see that com that commonality. Um, what was what was the key lesson that you learned during so, that time? So being homeless, like I, I don't want to do that again, right? And if I had to say a key lesson, and for anybody that's about to become homeless, maybe I don't know. Being homeless is really not what taught me much. What taught me much is my mother calling me for help and me being unable. And me as a man, I take a lot of pride in being a freaking provider. And then there comes my, the one person I care about more than anyone else asks me for help. It was like two to 300 bucks. She wasn't asking for thousands or millions, right? And I was unable. But yeah, I'm here standing here saying, I'm a man. I, I, I do all these things. I'm a savage, whatever. But I can't take care of my women then I better, you know, shut up and get the freaking work. And then it, it, there was a key lesson, especially if you're a man, you're a provider. And never be in a position you can't help the people you care about the most. That will make you the, feel the lead. Like you're just, you can't be, you can't call yourself a man anymore. You're done. And the key lesson is, I'm a provider. I will always be in that position. I'll never be in the position to be unable to do so for the rest of my life, even if I die for it. And I mean a reward. Right. So I think that's, that that's, that's I think that that's 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 brilliant because yeah. um, I think that frame that framework um, keeps you more. That's your why. Yeah. You know, I always I I, I actually have that. Um, as a key, my, key driver of my wife, yeah. you know, my wife, I have 10 children and, God bless every, you. and every day, um, that's constantly when I wake up in the morning, I'm constantly, I'm going to, I'm going to work to the best of my ability because yeah. I want to take care of my wife and my children. Wow. That's 10 children. You said I do. Yeah. From one yeah. wife. From one, it happens to be from one <laughs> I wife. I have yeah. to ask, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. God yeah. bless you. Yeah, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man. It's a, it's a full time organized chaos we've talked about it a couple of times in the show we had a sh- God show bless about you. it um uh yeah and it's 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 the most uh rewarding for me and so i understand i understand that i, de- I, I definitely hear that you and probably understand, understand that. it more than anyone else yeah no 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 <laughs> it's uh but I, I i appreciate that you thank you that you understand that and i know originally you came in 2010 and you came from Amman, Jor- jordan y- jordan yeah how was that so like how was life growing up in jordan and then Coming, you came straight to Miami. Yeah. Well, then, no, no, sorry, straight to Georgia, then Miami. Atlanta. Yes. Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, yeah. Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, life, I mean, 
Look, life in Jordan was amazing. I got uh, I got what I wanted from it on a personal level. Like uh, like like you learn your communication skills. You being a kid, you know all that good stuff. I got from Jordan. They didn't learn much about money, other than I was trying to sell candy in school and stuff. Mm. But you don't learn much of that. But I got all the nurturing I need there. Right, the family, all the good stuff, the foundation, which is technically very more, very much more important than money. You caring about the people you provide for. Yeah. I would debate a part of that has something to you with being a Middle Eastern somewhere or the way you were raised. People think people think I'm Israeli. I look I look I look Israeli. Where, where, I, I said your upbringing no, no, wherever that was. Definitely my upbringing, definitely my upbringing. I think I saw it from my yeah. especially from my grandfather. So what's your ethnicity like so where my you from? I'm so 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 I'm Jewish. I grew up I grew yeah. up I grew up I grew up in New York. My mother um is from my mother said from Poland and my mm -hmm. father's side from Eastern Europe from Belarus. Mm -hmm. So, so I guess that immigrant mentality. I saw that. I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. So, so there you was know, a lot of, there was a yeah. lot of that. It was a lot of family. There was a lot of hard times. Yeah, there was a lot. It was a, there was a lot of that. But you feel fortunate for growing up in that culture, right? Like it, it's yeah, which is you know what I got a lot of back it's home. It's whatever. It's whatever it takes all the time, always. Yeah, yes. I agree. And then yeah. coming to America, it was all about just me being on my own and yeah. finding myself and my capabilities and. It's a new country. I'm trying to learn the language. And I literally got put to a test, to the test of finding out what am I really capable of and what's mm -hmm. my weaknesses and how can I grow from there? Because I was alone. I was a kid. I wasn't even 18 right. yet. Unless you make yourself uncomfortable, you yeah. don't have the opportunity. Without a doubt. Uh, to see how much you could stretch yourself. 100%. You're so, absolutely right? right. And when we're in it, it's extremely painful because it's new. Yeah. Um, but you need, you, you need to force yourself. Yes. Um, otherwise, producing the same actions every day yes. uh, will equal the same exact results. You're absolutely right. Right. I so you gotta it. you gotta push yourself in that way. What separates yourself? I mean, I, I see your energy. I I, I hear Thank what you. you're doing now and moving forward. What separates you from other uh, real estate investors? What are you doing differently? As you, a company. You, you might not expect my answer. So what makes my company different is me because the speed of a team is the speed of a leader. And I am in decent contact with everyone in my industry. And I see how when they get to my level, they're getting a bit more comfortable. And I see those Tulum weekends. I see those uh, Kiki on the rivers. I don't drink. I don't party. I don't sleep around. I'm a man of discipline. The same discipline I was with in 2015 homeless I got it today. I just live in a nicer home. That's it. Mm. So I see them get soft and I'm the hardest one still. And I know them all and I know them by name. And that what makes my company different. Because if I push harder than everyone in the company, I wish Roy was still here. He'll tell you. Uh, that means as a company, we're still growing. We're still actually mm. moving at a higher speed than everyone else. Because when I see this CEO in Tulum, Without his wife, by the way. Wonder who he went with. And then uh, I'm there that weekend at the office. I'm not saying I don't travel to go see my family. I do. But, you know, I know I'm ahead. I know I'm not getting distracted. I'm still, I don't drink, I don't party. I'm focused on growing. You understand? Completely. And literally, yeah. just last uh, month... Uh, I literally made my company go call every investor we worked with in the last six or seven years and go analyze everything we sold for seven years since seven years ago. Till today, not a single one lost a dollar working with me. To knock on every piece of wood. Till today, they all made a ton of money. And you know how that makes me feel? And I can yeah. I can guarantee you not a single one that thinks they're competitors could do the same. I can line all my people up in the last seven years and I've sold hundreds of assets. Hundreds. Yeah. And not one lost because we work uh, obviously extremely hard. That's not enough. We work smart and we analyze, like, we're just good at the process overall. And in the office, 
I don't just push work, work, work. Go grab anybody in my company. They're all good people. They all love God. They all got family. They all make good money. Nobody is a piece of shit on the weekend. Mm. And they're all good freaking people. All mm. of them. That's amazing. And 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 that, like we we develop mm. people in my office, inside, outside the office. Like shit, we even got group chats. Who's up at five in the morning? And if one of the guys don't show up uh, to the gym at five in the morning, like as a joke for the rest of the day, he's getting roasted for not being up, you know, at five. And I love you know? that culture. I love, yeah, I, I love like the, I love that culture. And I want to yeah. tell you something. This is super important, also. Yeah. To and you're at where you want to be. So the people that are listening, you know, they're starting out. They need to have at least equal. You, they just heard your mentality of your company. They need to be at least equal to that mentality in order to have to compete. So in other words, in other words, like we said before, if you're going to do, oh, everything will be okay and you're, you're going to go here and you're going to do there, there'll be people because business is tough. Dude, I'll take what's theirs. Right, right. That's yeah. what, I mean, you're hearing it. Yeah, we and need the, them to stay because that way. But at least you're doing the right thing each day. Yeah, that's what I'm 100%. saying. You're doing, you're doing the right thing each Man, day. Man, I love when I see somebody just yeah. got a big check and they get soft. Because right. I know the next big one is not theirs. Right. So yeah. I do my fair share of trying no, to but change I people. I, but but, um, but, I, like, but I like that you, you, you understand that it's earned by extremely hard work. 100%. Targeted, very specific. Yeah, so I, I appreciate that. I appreciate tell me you. Something, tell me something right now that you're deeply grateful for. Right now, uh, man, I, I, I almost don't want to share it. Uh, someone very dear to my heart got their uh, test results back after a surgery they just done, and they're a hundred percent healthy. Yeah. Right now, yeah. this is the news I got this morning. So, so if you ask me this for today, that's what I'm most grateful for. Yeah, I heard. I, I have a friend also. Um, who also got test results a couple of days ago, um, and it came back came back healthy. So it's a very that's the hardest fear, and that's the hardest thing when you're dealing with someone you're close with. Yeah, I have and, a comment to make. Yeah, isn't it crazy how the richer you get, the a bit older you get, the more you realize health health is the most important thing. Because I, I just I I turned thirty in October, so I'm about to be thirty one. Uh, just two years ago. When I when there was still you a lot 20. more maturity, your your personality it was a lot more mature. Not that yeah. you look you look around your age, but your maturity level. Thank you so is, much. Is, is, is if you just more. asked me what yeah. was the most important thing just three yeah. years ago, I was like, I need I need a I need a billion. I need a hundred million by thirty. Mm. Right now, I'm like, if my health is not good, I don't care how much money is in my bank account. Mm. And I literally started taking my health serious about eight, nine months ago. I lost about 40 pounds and I'm on a journey to, you know, shred up. Like next time you see me, you're going to think I'm a bodybuilder, healthy. Like I'm going to do it the right way. Mm. Uh, just because I care about my health more than anything else. Even if I see somebody makes a million extra than me a year and they look like shit, I'm like, I'm ahead. Like when I woke up that morning, I was sitting in my, oh, you got to hear this story. I know we're going over. Yeah. The guy's about to slap me, you know, yeah. out of here. But yeah. I have to tell this story. No, I'm Dude, good. Uh, we're eight, hanging out here. That's what I love doing. it. So yeah. eight months ago, yeah. I was, way, uh, and not to get materialistic, uh, nine months ago, I had a G class on order. It's my dream car. I love that car. I don't want a Rolls Royce. I, I just mm. love G class, right? Anyways, I'm getting this car. It's on order. It's about to come. I'm sitting in my Escalade. And I'm just like fantasizing about how when I get out of the car, the noise and all of this, and the music goes out. I'm sitting on my Escalade in Aventura, it was a red light. And you know those Hermes belts, that sure. H, right? Okay, so I was wearing it, right? And as I'm visualizing my life with that G63 looking like a badass, I can't stop thinking of how that, you know, two H's bothering me because my freaking belly is hanging on them. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're wearing a belt that people I can't even see anyways because I'm freaking fat. And I'm about to get a car that's sexier than me. Dude, I want people to see my cars and think, who's this lucky fucker? And then get out of the car. And they're like, fuck. And he's also shredded. <laughs> I don't want to get out of the car and look like DJ Khaled. Like, yeah, he's fat as shit. But guess what? <laughs> you know, he's rich and famous. I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. I want to get out of the car. And they think, wow. And he looks good too. Shit. I make the car look good, not the car makes me look good. Because right. how many how many people in Miami, their cars make them look better? Or their money, or whatever, or their home. 
but not them. I make my house look better now. I make my car look better. I make my company look better. Shit, we got people, uh, we got the seller just sold us seven properties that saw a video of mine talking about actually similar stuff to this. He lives in Switzerland. He forwards it to his attorney and he's like, dude, I like this guy. See if he wants to buy my stuff. I still don't even know who's the seller. Mm. His attorney called me. He watched a video of mine. The video only got like 20, 30,000 views. It's not even that big of a deal. But that caused the deal, seven assets, and we've made a lot of money on them. God, God is great. And I was talking about health, not even real estate. And that led into real estate deals, right? The second I got healthier all around, everything got better. Now my team almost like, fuck, how can we keep up with this guy? He, he, he's richer than us. He's, he's getting healthy. And now, again, this is not bragging because we're very competitive in my office in a very healthy way. So without me telling, for example, Roy, because he was with me, without me telling him, like, oh, we're in competition, because it's, it, you know, we're not, but we are. Mm -hmm. The second I'm up at five, Roy's the only one who wakes up at five, like me, as consistent. All of a sudden, he's in a better shape. So the second I got faster and better, everyone got faster and better. Of and now everyone makes more money. So I'm gonna ask you, and again, <laughs> yeah. this can go anywhere. What is something about you that people don't know? Something about, about me people don't know? Uh, I'm actually very caring. And when, the more I'm an asshole to someone, that means I love you more. Like I'm more mean to my brother than anyone else because I know I care that much. And but people take me for like, oh, he's intimidating or, you know, his way or it's because I care. Right. You know, I don't think a lot of people know that. I think recently, maybe I started I to show it more. Know, I believe everybody, first of all, should have a, 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 a mentor or a life coach. Yeah. And these coaches, just in general, that idea, if someone cares, there will be times that they'll make you uncomfortable. And yeah. You really might not like them a lot. Yeah. Like you may actually hate them. Yeah. But um, I always see love and hate is actually the same emotion. And love and indifference is the is the difference. Yeah. When you care, when you care, you're saying, it took me a long time to understand this. When you care, you care. As long as you feel that, and you know that your heart is in the right place, Yeah. you say what you gotta say. Yeah. You say what you gotta say because you're coming from, there's no angle, there's no games. I care about this person, I'm saying what it is. Yeah. Get out of your way and say it. I wanna just tell you, first of all, this has been just a great interview. Thank you. Jalal, and how can people find out more about you and be in touch? Awesome, so literally you can go on uh, Instagram, YouTube, anywhere, and just type the king of Miami real estate. And mainly I'm always on Instagram and um, you know, that's where I'm at, the king of Miami real estate. I love that, I wanna yeah. just wish you, I think your, Appreciate you, man. your mindset is thank you. completely in the in the right space. Thank you so much, and thank Continue you for having me, man. to be consistent, right, I had another guest we talked about, He's wearing a t-shirt, consistency wins. Yeah. So stay with that, stay with that mindset. Appreciate You're you, gonna man. be tremendous. It'll be great. And good luck with everything. Moshe, thank, thank you. you for your time and thank you for having me. Hope you enjoyed my conversation with Jalal. Please subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode and follow me on social media at mpopak. Have a great day and I'll talk to you again soon.